Okay, God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you this encouragement um, that was given to me. Um, I've been meaning to do it. i just uh, been forgetting. Basically, um, one day um, I had this dream. Um, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of deep dream. Uh, I mean, it was like an action-packed movie, but uh, I'm not gonna elaborate on that dream. Um, however, it was very action-packed and it was very uh, suspenseful, and you know, I'm talking about jumping from airplanes and you know, leaping and you know, like it was just a lot of action, a lot of physical things. But um, I'm gonna pretty much stop with that because I never really um came to the full conclusion of what that meant but uh I can say that um it definitely had to do with um you know um activity um and action and you know a lot of suspense and things of that nature but um basically I came out of that dream um I don't know when I had this dream this dream was a, a few months back but um I went into prayer and, um, you know, when I woke up, like I said, when I woke up from that dream, I went into prayer and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me during prayer, um, uh, I can do more with you than without you. And I was very blessed by that because, you know, I was in a backslidden state, uh, you know, and I want to stop right there when it comes to um, backslidden. Um, you know, I just want to encourage the backslider, everybody who has been, um, you know, who has succumbed to this, who has uh, partaken in backsliding, who has slid back. Because what it is, is all backsliding is, is, and I really want to um, break this down to you. All backsliding is is a a procession or it's a continuation of sliding back from God I don't care you know if it's you know just losing a thirst and hunger you mean even losing losing a thirst and hunger is backsliding even if you are in prayer and reading, just your lack of thirst and interest itself is a sliding because it takes place in your heart. Um, and so, you know, from there it will manifest. Like it will manifest. And it doesn't even have to just necessarily be um, a losing in, of interest. It can be a, um, it could be obstacles. For example, you, you hear the Lord says that, um, you know, what does he say? He says, uh, who shall have faith um, when the Son of Man comes? Okay? Who will have faith because of the obstacles, because of the long suffering, you know, and um, all these things um, will happen. I don't care how um, studious you come off or, you know, if you're a scholar or if you're you know, a, a spiritual theologian. I don't care how spiritually muscular you are. I don't care how you show it off, prance around. You know, I don't care what degree you're in. You're going to experience long suffering. Every single one of the fruits of the spirit. Um, you're going to have to. Um, embrace and you're going to have to partake in order for you to walk the narrow walk that it will take for you to inherit the kingdom of heaven okay these are the things that will be before you like this is what you have to experience um, this is what you'll have to live out this is this is how you will overcome um, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony this is what the blood of the lamb did he 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 conquered okay he he 
he um he he took over you know death and and overcame and you know he overcame the world this the blood of the lamb is overcoming the world and walking in the fruit of the spirit that's the only way you'll be able to overcome the world and i say that to say that we can't ignore that fruit and suffering i mean uh, long suffering is in the fruit of the spirit we can't ignore that um i thank god that you know i was given the opportunity as soon as i came to christ to embrace long suffering because of the way i came to christ through um, being incarcerated, um, you know, and sitting and, 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 and being told what to do and, you know, being um, talked to, you know, as, as, as one who, you know, is kind of, I'm not going to say like a child, but I mean, just it was a lot of submission, you know, was presented to me right away when you're incarcerated, you know. You have to be submissive to the law. You have to be submissive to the authority, and in 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 such a way uh, that you have never been before, um, because they tell you when to eat. They tell you when, you know, what I mean to to uh, to sleep. I mean, not literally tell you when to sleep, because but I mean it's time to go to bed. Like it's time to go into your cell. The night is over for you to be outside of your cell you know what i mean um you cannot move around you cannot go where you want to go you you know you cannot eat you know from the microwave you can't you know what i mean there's just so many restrictions and in the and in those restrictions it's suffering and so you know um a lot of people can't endure that because they don't know what they don't know what it feels like to be um you know, utterly controlled. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't know what it feels like to be controlled. So, you know, and it doesn't feel great, especially if you're an adult, you know, being talked to like a um a child. You know what I mean? Especially um if you if you if you're not too fond to the European American treatment in this country, I mean I I grew up in a predominantly African American um, city, but uh, if you're already, you know, um, from down south or, you know, up there in the mountains and you're dealing with a lot of racism, and, you know, or, or you, you know, I mean, that's what you're gonna do. I, I, I had buddies who uh, was incarcerated, and um, you know. They were being talked to, getting called nigger, you know, by these COs, um, a boy, stuff like that. You know, what I mean, these were European American COs calling them this. Um, you know, this is this is this is what you have to experience, like when you get when you give over those rights. So, you know, and this is America. Like this is, like, you're not going to hear about that unless you know somebody who experienced that because the news doesn't cover that that's just what well, well that's just <laughs> you see what i'm saying like i want you to understand like there's another world um in this same country and you will be mistreated um and it doesn't have to do with the end times it's just this is here this is like that's there this is here you know what i mean so um anyway i just want you guys to understand that you know uh, but i mean as peter said like you know it's better to suffer for christ if you are going to suffer so um so that's the only way you'll be able to understand what it's like is to suffer. It's, you know, the only way you'll be able to understand the goodness that springs out of long suffering. I didn't, I didn't plan on making this thing about long suffering, but praise God. But that's the only way that you uh, understand uh, the fruit in long suffering um, and how long suffering is spiritual. The only way you'll be able to understand that is if you endure it. And um, if you don't, if you don't know what it's like, then God is going to place a tailor-made obstacle in your way just for you. I don't care if you're going to die next week. Um, suffering is part of this life. This is how we uh, grow. This is how we learn. This is how we become humble. This is how we uh, grow in appreciation. 
<clears throat> and I don't really believe that much appreciation comes apart from, you know, experiencing opposition. You know what I mean? Um, unless you're taught to appreciate, and unless you're, um, you know, um, taught to, um, you know, yeah, just taught to be appreciative. You know what I mean? If you're not taught that, I mean, then even that could just be words. You know what I mean? Like, oh, thanks, I appreciate you. But I mean, it, it, it's more than just words. <clears throat> so, so it's good to see opposition. It's good. It's for our, it's for our benefit. Um, so, um, you know, but but bringing this all together, um, me experiencing long suffering, uh, you know, this is what it takes to, uh, you know, to to follow the Lord Jesus, but, uh, yeah, um, so, like, that's what I experienced when I first came to Christ, and, uh, that's what you're gonna experience, but as the Lord told me, he said, uh, I, I could do, um, better with you than without you, and, um, I don't know how I got to long suffering at this given moment, um, please forgive me, but, um, I can do more with you than without you. Uh, that was very, that was very, uh, encouraging, um, because, you know, yeah, I, I, like I said, I was suffering in my backsliding because of obstacles. So because of the obstacles that was presented to me, it's, it depends on how you choose to, um, take that. You can take that in a way where you're going to go to Christ, um, harder, um, or you can take that in a a negative way where you're just going to either get angry with God, which I've never done. I've never been angry with God. But you can still become slothful with the Lord because of being drained spiritually. And um, the devil knows his tactics to, um, to you know, wear you out. Um, you know, it's even told that we're that he's going to try to wear us out. Um, so, you know, um, these obstacles that I've endured of my son, Deontay incarcerated, who I actually visited today. Um, he's, you know, title 16, um, charges an adult, um, a spring of robberies. Uh, I mean, he's, he, he's pretty much, you know, been doing this for a while, uh, you know, even last year, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really been tough on me, but, you know, sometimes things can be so tough on you that you don't even know how tough it is on you, and today, um, at the meeting hall where I was with him, I just broke down and cried, man, I just, I just, I just cried real hard, like, like, I feel cleansed by it, I feel purged, that's how hard I cried, it just, I just felt like I released some of my burdens off of me through my tears um due to seeing my son incarcerated you know to this extremes like i mean it's one thing when i was visiting him over the jail and i was um you know looking at him on the screen as you guys looking at me on the screen but it's another thing when you're face to face with somebody you know what i mean it's like it's like it's funny because a lot of people even look at these people online like they're not real people. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's that sister or that's that brother or that's that person. I even remember um, when my first, when I kind of like was new to YouTube, uh, there was one of the subscribers, a sister um, out of Orlando. And she, um, she would always like, you know, reach out to me real heavy and um, send me like, books of like stuff to just read on an email and I'm like how can she possibly believe like I might as well get in my word <laughs> but um you know um, I was like how could she possibly believe that I'm gonna read all this like that's not even fair to like <laughs> like like what you sent me is not even fair like you know what I mean I have I have a life and and you have a life but I don't know what kind of life you have and she didn't have children um she worked at an amusement park. Matter of fact, I think she worked at an amusement park in Orlando, Florida. 
Woman of God, though. I don't know. Unique, whatever. Um, but anyway, um, you know, she talked to me like I was a celebrity, like, because she asked for me to call her or something like that. And her and her mother was like, oh, my God, her and her mother. They're like, oh, my God, Jonathan Kayla. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Like, like I'm a real human being. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, like, I think something about the screen. It's like something about the screen that can either... I don't know, it's like something about that screen causes a distance from that person to the person who's the onlooker. And it just like, it alters a reality. You know what I mean? Like it kind of brings an alteration to reality. Um, like, you know, and I think that that's why we can esteem people higher. And I think that's why we can, you know, um, I don't know. I'm not even going to just say it's a screen because it's just reality. Um, but anything that can kind of like prompt you up and kind of like lift you up and exalt you as someone of prominence can always change um, and alter a view of how someone views you. You know what I mean? So if it be, you know, the separation from the pews to the pulpit, if it be, you know, the podium to the, um, the crowd. You know, or if it be, you know, um, you know, just the CEO chair, the CEO chairman with the, you know, you know, the whole like just just that status. It can separate you from <clears throat> um, from people in such a way where people can view you as someone uh, who is to be esteemed more highly than they ought to. You know what I mean? And not just as a um, a person, you know, as fallible as you and as uh, vulnerable as you in any shape, form, or fashion to some degree. Like, you know what I mean? Bleeds like you, breathes like you, um, suffers like you, endures like you, you know what I mean? Um, tempted like you. Okay, so these things are the re parts of the reality um, that uh, that we need to know that our brothers and sisters throughout the world experience. I don't care if you're not able to recognize um, the signs or the illustrations in Scripture that um, showed you know, Apostle Paul's, you know, uh, human nature or Peter's or like, you know, some people aren't good at recognizing that or even John, like it was clear to me when I read um, the Gospel of John, I once, like I went from looking at him as this favored, oh, the one that Jesus loved and then I realized, oh, he didn't want to mention his name so he called himself the one that Jesus loved. Then I realized, oh, wow, he's <laughs> illustrating how he beat, you know, Peter <laughs> in their jogging and sprinting to see if Jesus was inside of the tomb. Like, he went out of his way to let us know that, like, as if we had to really know that he beat Peter to the tomb when they found out that Jesus Christ was no longer in the tomb. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, wow, he's really a real person. Wow, that was kind of cocky of him. That was a little arrogant. Like, you know what I mean? That we didn't have to know that. That wasn't an important detail. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, you know, it, it just depends on, you know, I don't know. Some things, I mean, like, all things have to be revealed through, um, by God. Like, you know, you cannot just know these things. But I mean, I'm not saying that you cannot peer into a book. And see these stuff, and see this stuff. But it, it's it's one thing when God starts to reveal to you um, the 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 simplicity of man, and and you know, and how we how we are so needy, and how we desire glory and prominence and status, and and all those things, or what have you. And um, I mean, it's it's, it's so deep because you know, um, there's people you know 
and it's not even people that you think that I might be talking about or but it's just I know a lot of people who've been online, you know what I mean? And um I'm like, wow, like you know what I mean? Like a lot of these people aren't really, you know, who and when I say that online, I'm talking about Facebook, whatever, like you know I mean, just social media altogether. It's like it's like a status and I'm I'm about to share a dream right now, matter of fact. I'm about to share a dream right now. I need to share this dream. Um and I didn't plan on doing this, but it's just good for me to do it. I think it's healthy. Um, for you guys to hear this because um, you know we need to know that we are all um, in the same boat we're brothers and sisters even if we're more spiritual like we all have to repent we all have to be humble like we like no one goes to heaven in a special category where where they don't have to repent where they don't have to be humble where they don't have to be as a child. You know what I mean? Like he said, you have to be as a child or you will not inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, you have to, like, period. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? And so that means humble. That means forgiving. That means loving. That means kind. That means, you know, gentleness. It's just it's just the fruit of the spirit. So, um, so as far as platforms, I want to I want to read this dream real quick. And then I'll get back to the discussion about um, the breakdown of when the Lord told me uh, that I can do more with you than without you. So I saw people on social media, but on a show, everyone wanted glory. I saw people with sparkly apparel. And then I also saw Farrakhan and how he wanted attention and how people want praise. Because um, that guy's super arrogant. But that's, this was on the 18th of uh, September. Um, 2018. Uh, yeah, I had a bunch of dreams. That one, that was actually I had a dream. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so you know, like these platforms, you know, I've noticed how, and I, I've noticed it myself as well. You know what I mean? But I've noticed how in these platforms, we erect ourselves as someone, and we become really nothing. You know what I mean? Like, like it's almost like we set ourselves up for failure. Like, because it be it the praise of men, be it the um, the preparing yourself to even be filmed and trying to look, you know, very beautiful. I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, uh, you know, get make sure it's not lint. I mean, you guys be seeing me, I'd be like, oh, hold up, what's that? And I'd be, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I do that myself, but like. I've seen people with like, you know, um, this mesmerizing appeal and then like, you know, like you must have turned on the camera with this mesmerizing appeal like that you had with you. Like I like, you know, what I'm saying like there's clothes that I choose not to wear online to not bring that attention. You know, what I mean, that I will wear on the street. You see what I'm saying? Um, they're not sinful, but. It's also to, like, I saw a comment, guy was like, oh, man, I see you, you killing them because of my little hat that I had on. And it's like, ah, that's not it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, there's more, there's more purpose for a video, you know what I mean, and for than, than, than to just really show off. And it's not that I was trying to do that, but it was just, you know, boom, I'm about to make it now. You know what I mean? And then you just, you just do it. But I'm realizing that um, you have to be very, uh, Life, I'm not saying that you have to live a plain Jane life and there's no enjoyment, <clears throat> but you just have to be careful because, and when I say you, me, whoever, because these are the things that can set us up for failure. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're working hard and you want to reap some type of benefits of your labor and enjoy some of your labor. Do so, you know, but there's also, um, there's also a line where, you have to be careful because you're going down a a a different path of craving uh, the attention of man, where you can be exalted, you know, and um and 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 when you get into that place where you want to be exalted, rather than you want the savior to be exalted, then you've backslidden in that state as well. And I've seen people with videos, you know, um. You know, like, you know, all types of leopard print, leopard print 
sheets showing, making you know, cleavage showing, laying all looking seductive in the bed, pillow, leopard print, like everything's leopard print, you know, tons of makeup, eyelashes longer than a giraffe's eyelashes. Um, I'm talking about them, you know, them, them joints that be like that. Like, you know, you're not only catching the fly, but you're like catching it and then like crumbling it up and then spitting it out with your eye. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Them kind of eyelashes, them them joints that you're going to get from them Asian Oriental brothers and sisters. And so, um, you know, makeup, tons of that. Not, 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 not trying to knock it. I'm not trying to uh, create a law. But I'm just saying, like, you know, there comes a place where you're just flat out trying to seduce and you're trying to get glory. So that's backsliding. So there's like so many di different degrees of backsliding. There's so many different degrees of backsliding, even wanting to um, to just, you know, like there's just so many different degrees. It just doesn't end. And it's like that's why we have to constantly uh, examine ourselves. And in this still, we still have liberties. We still have freedom. We still have um, enjoyment that we can get from, you know, things that the Lord has, um, offered us, you know, he's offered us a platform. He's offered us different things. You know what I mean? Like we now have a platform where we don't have to be subject to these hierarchies in the congregation. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, that wall has actually literally been torn down. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot more people being won online that you're not even aware of, like I'm not even aware of, and it's been made known. Many people have made them made it known to me how they've been edified through the things that God has used me with. But imagine how many people who haven't said anything, you know what I mean? And so, you know, online ministry has is this is this is part of the fulfillment when Jesus said, "Greater works you shall do." You know what I mean? And by that, that includes reaching the lost. You know what I mean? And he don't mean when he's because he didn't mean uh, when he said greater, he didn't mean uh, uh, quantity in the sense of, um, excuse me, he didn't mean um, greater is in the sense of um, like better is what I meant to say. He didn't mean greater in the sense of like greater than him. But he meant greater in the sense of quantity, in the sense of, you know, like you'll reach more, like we're reaching more people, you know, because uh, Jesus was only in Israel. You know what I'm saying? We're able to, you know, reach different countries and different nations through what Jesus allowed us to do. And he told us that it would be greater. So it's not like it's just something that, oh, Jonathan, why did you say that? For what reasons? Like, no, I'm quoting our savior, fella. So. Um, that's that. And, uh, yeah. So he said, um, I can do more with you than without you. We need to keep that in mind. Um, I can do more with you than without you. So, you know, and I was, this was in the morning time. I was on my knees in prayer. Um, just came out of the dream. I don't even know. I think I probably had to go to work that day. And I was like, wow, like, wow, wow, wow. And he said it in such a loving way. You know what I mean? Like, it was very loving because these obstacles that I've been faced with, I mean, um, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little later down the line because I don't want to take up too much of your time because I do have some other things to share. Um, but I've actually, I've been cursed and I'll elaborate that, um, but I've been cursed, um. I've been cursed with the curse because of my um, disalignment. Like I got out of alignment with God um, and it happened around the time I um, got married. That's when it happened. It happened not around the time I got married, but when I got married. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain all that. It's, it's very, it's very um, imperative that you know who you are getting yourself involved with because you can bring a curse into your life you can go and get a curse <laughs> you know what i'm saying a curse that was minding its own business it was cursed by itself it was you know 
all by itself what it was, where it was, and you can go and get that. You know what I mean? I mean, my, my grandfather, he did that all the time. When he would um, bring people into his home who were uh, homeless, doing a good deed in his eyes. And these were people who tried to rape females in my family. You see what I'm saying? But but the devil knows how to manipulate. He knows how to quote scripture and use scripture against you and say things like, you know, you know, uh, I needed shelter and you did not give me shelter. And they say, you know, you like, man, you bringing people in from the streets, not walking in the spirit. You know, just there goes the scripture. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Like just a pick and play. Like, oh, it says it right there. I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? No discernment, no understanding. And so the devil will use that and he'll bring a curse on you. Um, you know, and then and then and then the greater um those decisions you make, you know, the greater the greater um the curse. You know. So so that's just how that works. But um yeah, back to uh um, I can do more with you than without you. Um, so, like I said, with these obstacles that caused me to personally backslide, um, it was a it was a collection of, you know, the devil. He will use those closest to you. So, um, you know, I've had a lot of troubles since um, just coming to the Lord and being free from prison and being a father, a single parent father. Most of my warfare came from my son Deontay and um, my own lust that I had to die to as I would um, continue to try to live for the Lord, you know, and um, not being used to this holy life of, you know, abstinence. Um, and, uh, you know, from time to time, you know, struggles with pornography and masturbation, um, as I've shared in other videos many times. And, um, you know, but it, it, it never was a consistent thing. It was, you know, you know, one of those times where you just feel lonely, you know, and you just have a desire and, you know, things of that nature. Um, also, I want to encourage the young men to um, go to bed early, <laughs> even though I'm up late right now, but, you know, I've been in the Lord's face quite a bit but um, it's very good to go to bed early because a lot of times it's not really the um, pornography addiction that people have a lot of times it's the lack of wisdom um, of operating in the night uh, because in the night you really should be sleeping and in the night these are what they call the bewitched hours and, you know, these witches are really out doing things. And you have to understand that they know who opposes them. They don't have any other opposition. And so they will do their due diligence to, you know, do whatever is going on in their world. We intercede when we wake up sometimes from prayer. I've many times woke up from prayer and interceded. Well, you know, they do what they do. You know what I mean? You don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. But I do know that the spiritual realm is real. I do know that um, I'm even being, you know, watched right now when I make my videos because of the court system. They're looking at my videos. They're trying to make sure, you know, that um, I'm not crazy. I just had to take a, um, a psychiatric evaluation this past, what, Thursday. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, there's a lot of complications, but, um, you know, just understand me when I say that this thing is spiritual, um, because I believe that I will have more liberty to speak the way I desire to, um, when I get my child back who has been placed in the foster care system. And so all of these things have, all of these things have been very traumatic to me. Um, you know, I mean, I was waking up to a wife every day every other day you know who you know i mean the lord showed me she wanted to kill me in visions um you know the lord showed me that she was you know um 
a psychopath. I mean, she's been diagnosed as a psychopath. That's the spirit, the spirit of a psychopath. Um, I mean, you know, door broken off the hinges, objects flying at me. Um, I mean, this is a regular thing. This was regular, screaming from the top of the lungs, waking up that way in the morning. Um, you know, fights, uh, um, delusional accusations. Um, whether it be me, whether it be my sisters, whether it be my brothers, um, whether it be my son, whether it be my son's mother, who I have not touched physically since 2000 um, or 2001. And, and, and that's the year he was born. And, you know, I never had a desire for her. And, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just a lot, man. And then, you know, just, but like I said, the complications with my son, Deontay, uh, you know, my own complications of, of, of striving and, 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 and uh, lust, uh, pride. Um, you know, I work around co-workers who are, uh, utterly demonic who uh you know what i mean i'm working around people who you know did 15 years did 36 years in prison straight real convicts people who had you know life um in prison or not life in prison but um spent yeah some people spent life in prison 25 years um you know that's considered life initially it was um you know and these people come home and they you know i have to work with most of these people i mean um what i mean somebody just got killed you know um few months ago at my job um and this is all the time like you know uh what 40 people OD'd in one day at my job um literally or was it 90 I'm not sure I think it was 40 people in the span of 24 hours and this stuff is like right outside my building like that I work in um these people are outside smoking k2 like the environment is very dangerous um not trying to intimidate nobody but I'm just saying like you know I mean, um, a guy who's who I was working with for eight years, he was working there for se eight years. I've been there for about seven, but he was there for eight years. He pulled out a knife on, on the manager, you know what I mean? And he didn't even get fired right away. You know what I'm saying? They're like, they have to like have a meeting to see if they're going to fire him because they're too focused on, you know, being uh, these false saviors of, look what we did for the African Americans and, you know, we gave them a job and, and so they, they're, they're so hung on that that they, it's hard to even get fired, <laughs> you know, because they're so busy being saviors and, you know, like, hey, we gave these guys a job. We got them. We cleaned them up. We, you know, we gave them, you know, um, their food handling's license and they're chefs now. And, you know, you know, they, the old, as the old saying goes, you can, you can feed a, a homeless person a fish, but you can also teach a homeless person how to fish. And so like, you know, they're so hung up on that savior uh, um, complex, which I hate to admit, but European Americans suffer from that. And that is causing me to, or us to just work around utterly demonic people because they're so focused on saying that they saved these people and that they did a great cause that they don't want to get rid of these people because... Who, you know what I mean, like, who will they be able to get their brownie points? Who will, they, who will be the poster child for them to get their brownie points? You know, and um, and so, you know, they walk, they got people walking around. Oh, this is Jonathan. Um, And I'm over there cooking, and I'm like, uh, hi, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> keep cooking, and it's like, I see all these, you know, high elite people, you know, and circle in the whole kitchen like here's our dark skin species here's our you know he's somewhat tame before the noon strikes and you know it's like kind of like that kind of feel like dang you know what i mean so the pressures of that i mean seeing the great hypocrisy where my ceo you know gets behind cameras news is always there politicians is always there obama came like i said before i wasn't there uh, Bill Clinton came before. I mean, all the top people, they always come there. Uh, and then, you know, he cares. Like, But before that, he's always walking with his head down. Um, he talked to my, he talks, you know, almost got fired not that long ago. Um, he, he called somebody up and asked them, so what did Jonathan say? And I'm like, the, the person's like, Jonathan didn't say anything. You know I mean, so it's like, it's a lot of racism there. You know what I mean? Um, it's a lot of racism in a, in a real 
uh, disguised way. And uh, the pressures of that, you know, it, it's just, that's, it's deep. Like, I, it's it's just so deep. Like, like I said, like, it's deep, man. People are getting fired from their job um, who, who, who got set up to get fired. You know what I mean? Like, they're just, just the pressures of life. Nothing that you guys probably have never been through because God is protecting me through it all. You know what I mean? Um, but nonetheless, there's definite pressures. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, psh, some things I don't even want to say because it could just be incriminating. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but it gets bad, you know, um, if I tell you like it's bad, just let your mind wander. It's very bad. And um like when I first got there, people were sleeping with little teenagers in the other room. Like, you know what I mean? You know, and I'm like, what kind of place is this? Prostitution going on, you know what I mean? In the other area over there. Like, you know, the people ODN. I mean, not ODN, but like leaning off these are my coworkers leaning off of heroin dough, leaning like, you know, while you cooking. And stuff like that. So, wow, just wild behavior, man. Just, just wild stuff that's very non-professional and just a lot of fights. People fighting, you know, you fighting your supervisor in the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? All types of wild stuff. Whatever you thinking is happening is happening. People pulling out knives on each other. All types of crazy stuff. You know what I mean? All types of wild, wild, wild stuff. Um, so it's just real, man. You know what I'm saying? And then now they opened up another location. And um, in that location, a guy just like last week, a guy just got killed um, in the car with his two children in the back seat. You know what I'm saying? And that's the location that that's like the new location where people are going to be working at. And in that area, that just happened. And, you know, it, it's always going. Life is always going to have something. You know what I mean, it's just always something in life. And so with these pressures of the city, you know, with these pressures of the job. With these pressures of, um, you know, a rebellious team who robbed like seven Seven Elevens, um, one Denny's, one McDonald's. I mean, assault rifles, you know, even BB guns. You know, just seeing that stuff, I'm like, wow, man. Like, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm, I saw it on like it's, it's literally online. You know what I mean, like, and I saw it. And I'm not gonna, you know share it but I'm sharing my testimony like of all these things that just really can weigh you down and you're like wow and and I just broke down and started crying today man because I didn't know the extent of how much I'm going through it's like you you, you can sometimes just be so um immune to just trauma and just pain and suffering that you don't even know how it's um molding you I mean, it's 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 for the good, you know. But it, it you know, it could harden you or it could break you. You know what I mean? And um, I want it to break me. You know what I mean? I want it to break me. I want to be broken. I want to be contrite. And um, you know, but it can harden you too. And you might not even know you're being hardened. Like like when you hear people, when you hear saints of God, like talk like like God is not going to forgive somebody or uh, those you're hearing people getting hardened even if you might not even have the discernment to recognize that but like oh man they did this they did that or they going to hell like or like or like you could just hear it in the tone like like God is not saying to me I can do more with you than without you and lifting me up you see what I'm saying or lifting you up you see what I'm saying and you can hear it in the tone when people talk I used to do it. That's why I know. So all these encounters have been for my benefit because, like it says, all things work together for the good of those who love God and call it according to his purpose. And, you know, it's just been making me more merciful because you have to you have to suffer to come to a place. You don't have to. You don't have to because there's a gift of mercy. But you, but, but, but if you have to, there's a place that you have, there's a place that you will, um, experience. And then that experience, in that place, it's going to be a lot of being put before opposition and being mistreated. Um, like what you guys have seen when my wife has been online and slandering me, that's a, that's a mere taste. And then, you know, um, 
other things going on behind the scenes with sisters and interactions and, and then people and then her going to uh, the brothers and you know sisters and, and them making videos about me that's just that's just a little tiny taste of like all the other stuff that I've shared with you like I told you about my job like murders and you know what I mean like stuff like people coming at my mom like you know what I mean like all time like my mother was losing her hair behind my my my, my wife Say, you know, taking her to court saying that she molested my stepson. You know what I mean? Like, she was. So, like, this stuff. But then at the same time, God also, you know, blessed my mother with dreams to show her compassion for my wife. You see what I'm saying? And this is a woman who lost hair. <laughs> hair. A good significant amount that she didn't even have to tell me because I recognized it. So. <sighs> It's all for your good. It's all for your making. I mean, um, there's a guy online who got uh, gasoline thrown in his face and got lit up with a torch. His face is all destroyed. Man of God. You know what I mean? Like, you're not that person, but that's his plight. You know? And um, so, you know, these things can make you backslide. Harden you, or they can break you. You know what I mean. What happened to me is, I I got into a, a real deep sunken place of just, you know, reading when I want to read, not reading, praying when I want to pray, not praying. Um, not in a place where I'm just like you know never praying and never reading, but that's not what it takes to backslide. And that's why I don't want you guys to be deceived about. When you get out of that routine of um, being before God's face um, and having the desire to do so. And even if you don't have a desire, you have to fight for that. You have to fight to be hungry. You have to fight. Don't let nobody lie to you and tell you you don't. Because he said you must work out your salvation with much fear and trembling. And part of that working it out is... You not waking up feeling the same person you felt yesterday. You know what I mean? You didn't. You felt wonderful yesterday. Then he'll throw a fiery dart at you. You know what I mean? And you're supposed to lift up the shield of faith to quench it. And you know, um, but that's the fruit. That's the armor. That's the armor of God. And see, you can talk that. Oh, that's the armor of God talk. But it's like, well, what does that look like um, practically? And a lot of people don't have the gift to explain the practical sense of the armor of God because you're not walking around with your helmet, you're not walking around with a shield, you're not walking around with a sword, you're not walking around, you know, in some, in some, you know, you're just not walking around like, you know, like you're just this metal plated soldier. So cut it out because it sounds great and you're doing good at explaining that part, but then you gotta go outside, lock your door, Lock your bottom lock. Lock the screen door because of the neighborhood you live in. Then you have to, you know, go to your car. Take the set, you know, the um the car alarm off and take off the um you know, the the car lock, the the lock on your wheel. Start your engine. Drive. It's time. Go to your destination. What does it look like practically? What does it look like practically? So yeah, so in Paul speaking figuratively, Paul also will let you know what it looks like practically. You understand? And when you listen to these saints of God, when you listen to saints of God in the congregation, you know, challenge them. What does this look like practically? Challenge me, Brother Jonathan. Brother Jonathan, what does this look like practically? Because like I said early in this video, we're humans. We're people. So please, break it down practically, because if you're not, how good am I as a service to you? Like what, like we, I mean, I've married a person who did all the outward talk. So I'm saying like, and there's tons of saints who do the outward talk, but you don't see the fruit. You see what I'm saying? And the fruit is the practical Example, the work, the deeds. Fruit also means deeds. The fruit of your labor, the deeds of your labor. 
you know, the results, you know, um, the outcome, like, what is it like? What a, what a, what does it look like going into this? What does it look like coming out of this? What is backsliding? Does it mean that you wake up after speaking in tongues and you want to go masturbate and watch pornography? Like, that's why you need to know the small steps backwards. You need to know what it looks like. You need to know that you can stand still and backslide. You need to know that you can go to church and run from God. You need to know that you can sit in the front row of the congregation and, 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 and duck prayer in the morning. You're running from prayer in your closet to go worship with the saints. And then you come back home and you don't do any of that. You need to know what that looks like. Like, this is the practical talk. This is what it sounds like. Always, you know, have patience to hear me speak practically. You know, because um, that's what I'm going to do, because I want you guys to know that we can talk this talk because the Bible is full of figurative words, you know, and it's for you to be wise enough to know where Jesus is going with what he's saying. You know, what I mean, but some people are so good at this figurative stuff where they can just quote it. And they can look real shiny. And sparkly online. But when it's their turn, what I've grown to learn, that a lot of people, they're not prepared. Because that outward image is so, it's, it's just so, um, I don't know how to explain it, man. It's just like. It's from the heart, man. Everything has to be inside of you. You know what I mean? Like, you have to know what it's like to um, to endure. And saints want to know. There's babes want to know. People want to know. So, you know, backsliding can be unforgiveness. Backsliding can be, you know, bitterness. Backsliding can be anything that is not pleasing to God. And you not um, willing to um, repent from it. If you're not willing to repent from it, this is who you are. You are a backslider. And by that, you're a transgressor. Because as he says, if I build those things that I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. And these things were all once destroyed at your conversion. So when you go back to unforgiveness... When you go back to bitterness, when you go back to a lack of compassion, when you go back to a, a lack of empathy, you're backsliding. Okay, so the solution is to go to the Lord, you know, um, get in the word of God, know what he says and know what he means when he says what he means, because he's speaking practically a lot. I mean, excuse me, he's speaking figuratively a lot. But in him speaking figuratively, he's looking for you to depend on him to know what he is saying. Okay, so when the Lord says, you know, he who takes his hands off the plow is not fit for the kingdom of God. He's not worthy of, to be called his disciple. You know what I mean? Like, um, are you really having your hands on the plow? What are you doing? Like, are you telling people about the Lord? Are you, you know, witnessing? Not just a video. Like, are you really making this your heart? Like, I never forget one day where my heart was shown to me. And this is before, I don't even know if I, I didn't, I didn't even know Brother Roy yet. I don't think. But, um, and I might, I might have known him. But anyway, me and a couple of other brothers. And my brother Minister Sidney, the one who raised the dead. Um, we all like met up at my sister Erica's house. And um my brother Mark, he was living there. He's my um European American brother. He was living there as well. And then um the brother who me and brother Roy 
started preaching with when we first started preaching his name is like brother Masai or something like that anyway he last I checked he wasn't living for the Lord um so you know this, this, this stuff is really real but um and it's because of obstacles he didn't he didn't get his children I mean he he went to court he fought he didn't get his children hard in his heart towards God but anyway um we all came together prayed and was got about to go hit the streets and um, I was in a church at this time where, you know, you know, I, I, I realize now that I was trying to please the pastor. And that pastor wanted footage of us preaching. And I wanted to make it an obligation in my heart that I made sure that I got what we did on footage. And I was so hung up on that footage because it wasn't easy to do. I think I needed to get batteries or I needed to get like, I needed to, a wire to like, I don't know what I needed. I needed something and it wasn't going well. And um, the brother who we first started preaching with me and brother Roy started preaching, with, his name was like brother Messiah or something. He was like, you know, like, like what if, what if you don't, cause I was, I was showing, it was showing in my heart that I really wanted that footage. And it was like almost as if I wasn't even concerned about the souls more than me actually verbally speaking and it being captured on footage. You understand? It's like it has to be it has to be seen. Like these works have to be seen. Especially that the person said that they wanted to see it. Like and because everything wasn't working out and I don't think it was possible for me to film it after a while, I got to a place where I realized I had to check myself because of what he said. He said something to the degree like, um, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, what if you can't film it? Like, like, where you, what, like, where your heart at? Like, what, what's your motive? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what's your focus? And it caught me in my tracks and, you know, that helped shape me. Even though I made videos afterwards because I've seen how much of a blessing it could be online because I would listen to Brother Royce um, preaching um, all the time because listening, I don't know if y'all listen to my Brother Royce preaching on my playlist, but listening to his preaching is just, it's just anointed. It's just anointed. It's just the Holy Spirit. And it's just a blessing when I hear his preaching. And, um, you know, so I know it's like, you know, capturing that and putting it online gives it more life and more people can hear it you know what i'm saying versus then when a person who was walking past that day heard it and it fell on deaf ears or somebody heard it and forgot or somebody heard it and you know they you know they they remembered and they came to christ but you know what i'm saying that's that was just that but but you know it's good because capturing it can put those seeds in different soil, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's still good because it, it's like, it gives it, it's like you're recycling, you know what I mean? Um, or you're just, you know, just giving it more life than what it had. So I don't knock people who make videos, but, but in me not knocking it, it's like, you know, we just have to discern ourselves, man. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It don't matter what you get yourself into, you know what I mean? Um, and also the way this has also changed me, um, is by just not being as, um, not judging my brothers and sisters as I once did, because now where I'm at now and seeing who people really are. And when I say people, I mean like vast people from far and near and wide like it's not about your garments it's not about makeup it's not about none of this stuff like i mean it can be you know what i'm saying it can be like you do have to be modest that it, i'm not taking away but boy like i i mean boy man modesty is not gonna get you to heaven because your heart gotta be right man i know people who modest who ain't nothing 
I know people who modest who trying to sleep with other people's husbands. I know people who modest who married and 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 they and you know they trying to get they trying to get pictures of your private part. And they and they and they living for the Lord, so to speak. You know what I mean? And they and they trying to see your private part. I know I know a woman who trying to see two people. She she asked for two guys pictures of a of a um private area. And she got the little um Mary Poppins look with the little Mary Poppins thing and the whole, you know, Mary Poppins clothing. And she trying to see what you're working with. You see what I'm saying? She trying to she trying to see what's going on. You feel me? So I'm not deceived, man. I don't fall for that stuff, man. To be honest with you, man, a lot of them people be the same ones who 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 vicious, boy. And if they not vicious in this degree, they vicious in that degree. You know what I'm saying? A lot of self-righteousness comes with it, too. Because they like, look at me, you know, uh, I'm different from the world. You know what I mean? Like, dun 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 I am a Christian. It's like, no. Sit yourself down. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know you. So, it's a lot of that out here, man. It's a lot of that out here. People who you would never, um, people who you don't know. I mean, just people you don't know. People who your mind won't make you think, I know who he's talking about. Nah, nah. Just understand that, man, we have to humble ourselves because it could be you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, this stuff is real, man. Um, yeah, so, pretty much done with that. But as far as like the, uh, he, I could do more with you than without you. God doesn't want to kill you. He doesn't want to take you out. Like, God really is love. He, like, he really is waiting. I mean, we don't want to take that for granted. We don't want to take it for granted because you can die. Um, he said that I, what did he say? He said, um, he said, uh, Israel committed adultery. I put, I had put her away, and given her a bill of divorcement, a, a, a bill of divorce. You know what I mean, so we don't want to be the ones who he gives bill of divorce. Sure, he had a remnant. You know what I mean, he always had a remnant, but you see what he did. Like he 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 divorced a lot of people. Um, a lot of assemblies, a lot of people who were. A lot of people in the nation of Israel, he divorced. And when I say people, I don't mean one singular person. I mean, like, he wiped out, what, 18,500 people one day or something? I don't know. But, like, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of people who he have divorced, okay? And um, we don't want to be those people in our backsliding, you know what I mean? Because it, it can happen, you know what I mean? But, um... I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his his love. And it's real. It's not even it's not even it's it's so his love, you know, I had to share this with um one of my coworkers the other day, you know, because he's he's been struggling in different little areas and um he 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 really wants to come to the Lord, but he really has a lot of different um things, you know, um plaguing in his mind. And um but I had to let him know also. And the Lord spoke to me about him on different occasions. Um but I had to explain to him, I said, you know, the love of the Lord is 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 very um beyond us. Like like it's very the right just as just like the wrath. Just like the wrath of the Lord is very great. You know what I mean? But 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 at this moment we were talking about the love, and I was telling him, like, you know, the love of God, you know, it's it's so it's so it's so beyond finding out in the full completion of it. You know what I mean? Like it's so multi. It's just it's just so mysterious. And he's so he's so much more long suffering than a man. You know what I mean? King David even said that I'd rather, you know, you um cause me to suffer. I'd rather be put in your hands and you judge me than for man. Because he, because mankind is not, um, let me see where that scripture is. I'm going to find it real quick. That's a beautiful scripture to use right now. Um, 
Hold on. And then I'll just close this out. Okay. And he also says in the scripture that our, that our sins that he does not he does not deal with us according to how what our sins deserve. You know, um He does not deal with us according to our sins deserve. Uh he he has not dealt with us according to our sins or repaid. Let me see. Psalm 103, verse 10. Um, not saying that he won't one day, because our days are numbered. Um, but you can escape that through your repentance. And and he's long-suffering, uh, hoping that all repent and that none perish. Um, and he's, he's, he's long-suffering, and um, he's not slack um, in his promises. Some count slackness. Uh, see, you're not dealing with man here. You're dealing with God. So it says, um, he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Um, he has not repaid us according to our iniquities. He has not dealt with us harshly uh, as we deserve. Like, that's when you're dealing with God. I mean, but when you're dealing with man, you know, you know, man is kind of, man is kind of, um, man is kind of cold. And that's where the Lord is, he's, he's really um, breaking me in that area of just becoming more uh, sensitive and more loving and more kind. The only reason why I can't take my wife back is because the Lord has warned me about her. He's warned me and he's protected me from her because she's really, um, she's really a wicked person who needs deliverance. But um, her evil is so beyond... Um, that I don't need to be in her midst. I need to let the Lord handle that. She's delivered to Satan. But anyway, um, and David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. That's 2 Samuel 24, 14. And again, the only reason why I share these things about my testimonies with, um, my wife to the extremes that I have is because, um, you know, that stuff has already been exploited online. But, um, but I also would be transparent, you know what I mean? Because I've been transparent thus far and I don't mind sharing my life and what I've encountered and what I've endured, especially if it can deliver somebody else. But, um, yeah, I'm not so great that I need to be that private. I just don't want nobody to fall and make the same mistakes that I've made. Because I've made a great deal of mistakes, and I just really want you guys to uh, be encouraged by my testimonies and um, all the things that I have to offer. Because I have a great deal of of of, of experience. Um, what I've encountered for a year of just marriage, a year and some months of just marriage. <laughs> don't even worry about trying to be on a contest level with me, because you don't want this. <laughs> You don't want this. My wife called the police and my mother six times in one day. The police were telling my mother, like, you know, she was always calling the police on you. Um, she sent the police to my, my job so many different times. Um, you know, um, my mother-in-law, you know, accused me of molesting my stepson. You see what I'm saying? And God used me to heal her of two years of uh, bleeding. You know what I mean? Um, she had the issue of blood. So, you know, God wants us to, and I mean, I believe that happened first, where she accused me. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like this love, this love, this level of love, and this level of forgiveness. You know, like I said, I, people who people who um, played a part in being able to how, how can I say this? It's just I. You get a chance to see ugly. When pressure's applied, I'm gonna just say that. When pressure's applied, and you see people being placed under pressure, you get a chance to see how much people can endure, and how truth comes out. Like you know what I mean? Like pressure will will will, will cause you to backslide, 
from God. Even if you're, even if you, even how you deal with people is backsliding. Understand that, because he said that how can you love God whom you have not seen, and not love the brother before you? So even you know, this thing is so deep, man. We have to really make sure we're pure, as he is pure, and we have to make sure we're humble as a child. You know what I mean? And we have to make sure that we walk in wisdom. Um, but just, but just, you know, um, not being so uh, sheltered from 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 being vulnerable. Love is very vulnerable, and there's a lot of people among me who have not made themselves vulnerable, and it crippled them, and it crippled. It crippled them in a, in a great deal. And so, you know, make yourself vulnerable. Um, that's one thing that I can tell you about love. If I can leave you with anything. Love is very vulnerable. Jesus made himself very vulnerable. Okay? Agape love is vulnerable. It's a selfless love. A lot of people, they get on here to teach. A lot of people get on here to elaborate. A lot of people get on here... They ain't been living for the Lord that long, and they making all these videos. Man, I really feel bad for people who who really do that. I feel bad for people who don't be praying like that, and don't be in a word like that, or don't have the knowledge of the Lord like that, and they be uploading a bunch of videos. <sighs> Boy, because the devil is going to come after you. The devil came after me because of my ministry. He came after me because of 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 the threats. Of how much I've exposed him. Go down the video lines. I've exposed him so bad. Through the power of God. His grace. And his 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 his, his revelation. You know what I mean. Um, just so many things. He's been exposed. Um, I saw in a vision. A little, you know about. People what they do in sports. What they do in the movie industry. And I'm not saying that other people. Have not exposed these things. But. The devil doesn't want you to expose it. See, he doesn't mind. I'm not saying he doesn't mind. He does mind. He doesn't. He 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 he's paying attention to all these people with ministries online. But what I'm saying to you is that he doesn't want you to expose it because because he he already got it out for Sister Ebony. You need to know that Sister Ebony. Stay very close to the Lord, and be prepared because the devil's coming. Be very prepared. He's coming. You keep uploading these videos. You keep telling people you need to. I don't even care if you make videos. The, if you keep telling people that they need to live righteous and holy and pure. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to scare you. But I'm saying this to remind you. You know what I'm saying? Because the devil is after you. He's after us. You know what I'm saying? And don't let that intimidate you. Just let that wake you up. Because you don't want to be sleep. You don't want to think that you've gotten to this place. But see, I will tell you this, though. In this curse that I've experienced, um, and I'm coming out of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm coming out of it. It's beautiful. Like, I finally got my unsupervised visits with my son for the first time this week. Um, you know, um, so, you know, that's beautiful. Um, I finally got to see my son, Deontay, um, today um, face to face. Um, in New Beginnings that's the detention center out of Laurel, Maryland that he's at um, it's the old Oak Hill too um, I was there before as a youth um, so that's that's a beautiful thing even though you know he's about to be um, sentenced and he's getting sentenced this Tuesday and he's going to be um, getting shipped out to the feds pretty soon the federal prison and he's going to be in there with adults and stuff like that And but um one thing I can say, um, man, he's not the Deontay that y'all know anymore. Like he's got, he's got like an inch or two on me, and he's muscular, <laughs> and he's fighting all the time. And he's like, it's it's just it's just it's not even it's bad, but um, at the same time it's sad because carnally, I'm like, well, it feels good that my son's not in there. You know, getting bullied around because he's he he walk up to you and just start hitting hitting you and you don't even know what hits you. All you know is the last time 
you was just talking trash about Deontay and next thing you know you look up and he hitting you. You know what I'm saying? He he's stomping you out. And I'm like, Wow, man, this is my crybaby son. Like he was a crybaby. You know what I mean? And now he's like on some old stepping to you and fighting you and, and you know, he got some size on him. He, you know, he ain't a little he he, he definitely ain't a push he he was fighting like this while he was skinny. And he ain't skinny now. So it's like a part of me feels good that he's not in there getting chumped around. But then a part of me feels bad because it's like I keep telling him, like, Deontay, trust the Lord. You know what I mean? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And he's saying, God says, make room for his wrath. And so I keep teaching him that. And so please keep him in prayer regarding that. Um, it's tough on a parent, man. But, um... Yeah, I broke down. I just started crying because I never expected that for him, for his life. I never expected that for his life. And even that, even when I cried, I can see how hard he is. Like he didn't look like he 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 just looked like like I can't even explain it. It was just like that wasn't my son. Almost it was like it was tough. That's my son. I love him, but it was just tough to see him in that situation and even after my tears and trying to like you know get myself together he was just looking at me with, with this cold dead look and I think it just comes from a lot of fighting and a lot of defending yourself and a lot of I mean because I'm in there with other he's in there with other people in prison so I mean they're at their visit they're at the visiting the hall too so maybe I don't know maybe maybe to him that didn't look you know, masculine, but um, I really love I, I love the fact that um I got a chance to release those tears because um that hurt he needed to see that hurt my son needed to see that hurt released from me because that was um that was my love for him and he needed to see that because the last time he probably seen me crying well he seen me crying in church during worship many times but on a personal level the last time he seen me cry was when i was getting released from prison when he he and my mother came to pick me up and i embraced him with a hug and i just started crying so you know the next time he see me crying in regards to this is like me crying and it's his turn this is just 10 years later so it's just really tough um i did meet king tone today King Tone is the king. Tone is the leader of, uh, he's the leader of the Latin Kings. And um, he's got some videos where he's talking about how he's been saved by Yeshua. Um, and he works there now at the New Beginnings um, place. And my son, evidently they talk and, you know, he was like, you know, talking about me like, well, you guys look just alike and, you know, you know. Um, it was good to see that how he was talking about like man, you know um I've my parents were praying for me since 1982, and you know I finally came to the Lord like I guess he was talking about like some years down not that long ago I guess I don't know maybe ten I don't know I don't know how long ago but um he's with the Lord now and and um it was good because he didn't uh you know he shared that and it's and he didn't he could have withheld um. Because it's funny because I say that to say, and I'm gonna make another video about snitching, and this is gonna be for a different, because you know I'm not I'm not I'm not the Christian that y'all like listen to online. Like I come from a different background, and part of this background is still somewhat a part of me, because these are the people who I'm faced with every day, and these are the people who. I witness to, and these are, this is my, you know, like the streets, see what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of people don't really always understand that, but they'll understand Paul when it comes to him having to go back to the Pharisees or they'll understand, you know, um, like, like you have to understand like Nicky Cruz, he come from the street. Nicky Cruz had to go back to the streets. So I'm saying like, that's what God does. Like God, when you're strong enough, God's going to put you back in that environment to have you face those people. He's not going to just have you like okay well that's y'all and i'm going over here now now he wants people to see 
which you came from and that, you know, um, that there's hope for these same people. And so, um, you know, <sighs> yeah, so it's just deep, man. Hopefully, you know, this prison ministry, um, thing goes well with me cause I was just, um, um, it's funny because the day before today, yesterday, Saturday, uh, I met, I saw somebody again and they said, you know, um, if I would volunteer for some prison ministry. So keep me in prayer about that because I actually prayed for that. And um, I'm going to be making videos that are really for a different audience. They're really for a different audience. So, you know, get your children ready. Um, and when I say a different audience, all the children can listen to this stuff, like all the youth, but especially um, those who are in the inner cities who, um, who have you know, encountered crime and who have encountered, um, you know, um, run-ins with the law. Those are the people who I really want to um, make a, a, a number of videos for uh, coming soon um, because it's very, it's very uh, important that they hear what I have to offer and that they see um, what it's like to be a man of God and steal the streets right there. Because for men, we're dealing with a different type of beast because men are masculine. That's why they go to Islam. I thank God that my son still believes in Yeshua. But this is the reason why men go to Islam. This is the reason why you, women of God, are having such a hard time finding men of God. So just in case you or like, why does Jonathan always talk about the streets or, you know, stuff like that? I'm letting you know now. And it's not even just about the streets, but just men. Because I was in there with people who, you know, weren't from the inner city, but it's still the streets. But, I mean, like, I was locked up with the guy who, um, who was trying to kill John Gotti's brothers and John Gotti. And he was trying to kill um, Donald Trump's sister, who's a supreme judge. Um, his name is... Um, Manna, you know, I would pass out tracks to him. You know, he was part of the Genovese family. Um, you know, I would witness to him a lot too. You know what I'm saying? Um, Henry Manna, something like that. But he was a gangster or whatever. And um, old man, bodies. He was a con 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 consigliere. He's like the guy before the the mafia boss, Godfather. He was like the guy right underneath. Because you don't just go to the Godfather. It's just like, it's set up It's set up in a real demonic way. Everything's demonic, man, out here, man. But um, it's, it's the devil does nothing that, that God hasn't done. Because you have to go through the Son of God, Yeshua, to get to Abba. So it's just like, you know, it's all mimicking. But anyway, um... I appreciate everybody, man, for listening. Um, um, be careful because, you know, you don't want to be divorced. <laughs> I don't want to be divorced. You know, he's presenting us as betrothed um, in this, in the wedding supper will take place once we're in heaven. So um, people have been divorced already. And, uh, you know, um, it's real. Um, we are, we are his, we are his, uh, his, 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 the church is his, his bride. So we have to remain that bride and we have to wait on the Lord and we have to humble ourselves. And, um, yeah, that's it. So God bless you, man. Um, got some videos coming soon. Pray for me too about these videos because I have a lot of warfare where I just feel like I can't make the videos. But um, thank you.